Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Adam Parrish. Uh, Adam, you uh, uh, you had a fun hand for us. Um, yeah, this was an interesting one that I was playing this afternoon. Um, I was playing with a student, and I was north. And so I opened a diamond. My partner bid two diamonds and inverted raise. They doubled, and I bid three diamonds, which is kind of my weakest weakest thing I can do. Um, and so here I am, I'm in three, three diamonds. And this looks like an excellent contract, doesn't it? Like, I have three uh, heart losers, and they've just led a club. And so, you know, that's going to be the ace of clubs, but then the king is high, and I have all the rest of the tricks. Seems so, like you're right where you should be. Why why did you bring this hand in, Adam? Yeah, why? what 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 goes wrong? <laughs> right? So I play low and they take the ace. And back comes the three of clubs. And now I'm presented with an opportunity. If I just take the king of clubs, I draw trumps, I give up my three hearts, I make my contract, no problem. But if West has the queen of clubs, I can finesse. I can play the jack. And if it wins, I can draw trumps and play the king of clubs and throw a heart from the dummy. And I'll only lose two hearts instead of three. So this is a classic match point conundrum. If you're mm. playing imps, it's not an issue, right? Because the over tricks don't matter that much there. Making your contract matters. You would never think about this finesse playing Swiss teams or a knockout. You would take the king, you would draw trumps, you would throw the hand in and move on. But at match points, the difference between 110 for making three and 130 for making four right. could be big. Right. So how, how do you make this decision? How do you decide how greedy to be? And this is a really important uh, thing to learn as a match point player is when you need to be greedy and when you shouldn't. Right. Right? So there's a few things that I'm thinking about, right? One is just what do I know about the hand? Well, Wes made this takeout double. They're a past hand, but they made the takeout double. So they're the one who's going to have the majority of the, the missing strength, right? I have, what, 13 points, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 points, and my partner has 10. So that's 22 Say that West has 10, that's 32, and like eight for East. So they're slightly more likely to have it, but not that much. If you look, the lead was the eight of clubs. What is the eight of club? Like that could be a high one. Like maybe they don't like the suit. It, it's not clear. Um, so maybe West has it, maybe they don't. I don't have enough information to be like, oh, I'm sure West has it. I got a finesse. The next question I need to ask myself is, how normal is this contract? If everybody is going to be in three diamonds, then I'm either going to get an average board by making three diamonds, 110, or a great board for making four, or a zero for going down. But it's very rare that everyone's in the same contract, right? Hmm. That doesn't happen very often. So can I imagine that other people are going to be other places? Sure. Some people are going to be in no trump on this hand, right? Yes, we have a 5-5 five, five diamond fit, but we are both relatively balanced. Hmm. Um, if people are in no trump, they have the same nine tricks. Uh, sorry, eight tricks. Five, six, seven, eight tricks is 120, right? So look at that. Mm. If somebody's in one no trump and they take five diamonds, a club, and two spades, five, six, seven, eight, that's eight tricks and that's 120. So if mm. all I get is my 110, I'm going to lose to them. But if I get 130, I'm going to beat them, right? So now I'm thinking, okay, I'm not just competing with the people who are in three diamonds, Right. I'm competing with the people who are in one no Trump or two no Trump. 
So somebody who's in one no Trump or two no Trump is going to get five diamonds, two spades for seven, and the king of clubs for eight. And that's 120. So my 110 is not good enough against that, but 130 will beat them. So is that so, a reason we should be more risky or greedy here? Yeah. So I need to think, like, are people going to be in no Trump? And I think some people are. Right? It's not unreasonable to think people are going to be in no Trump. And they're not going to have how do, how do you weigh that against the risk of... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone, there will be other people in three diamonds, and so the you know increasing the risk that you'll go down against them. That's right. That's right. It's so hard. This is what makes match points such a weird and beautiful game. Mm. Uh, so, I think this is a really close decision, right? There are potentially also going to be people who get too high on this hand, right? Maybe someone gets to three no trump. Uh, I, they might even make three no Trump if this club finesse is working. Um, hmm. Someone might be in five diamonds. There might be somebody who buys the hand east west, right? They have an eight card spade fit. Um, so maybe just any plus score is good. Plus scores hmm. are always good. Um, there will be people who will have overbid this. Yeah, they'll end up in trouble. So let's just focus on getting by, and we'll beat everyone who made a mistake in the bidding or, or right. pushed it too far. And the last thing I'm going to think is um, the lead has worked out well for me, right? Like if they don't lead a club and I have to do it myself, I lead up towards the king jack of clubs, and if West plays low, I have to guess. Now, if West has ace queen, it doesn't matter. But if not, I might guess wrong. And so maybe just the fact that they led a club has actually mean I'm making three diamonds when other people are going to go down in three diamonds, uh, right? Because that extra club trick could be it. So can, I, can I ask a, a quick question, Adam? And then maybe actually, actually, even before I ask my question, uh, let's take a minute, uh, take a second, folks watching. Uh, put your money where your mouth is. Leave a comment uh, before you see how things break out. Um, mm -hmm. What would you do here? Would you go for the short trick and uh, win with the king clubs? Or do you try the jack of clubs, not knowing yet where the queen is? Uh, take a second. Um, leave a comment. Or just think. You, you know, keep it in your head. Okay. All right, yeah. we're back. Um, Adam, if... If West has both the ace and the queen, mm -hmm. what are the reasons East might have had for leading a club? That's a good question. So West did make a takeout double. Um, and, you know, maybe East has five clubs. Or they just, they still, they didn't want, they have like ace, queen of hearts and didn't want to lead that. Or they had the jack of clubs that they didn't want to lead away from. Um, making passive leads away from nothing is, is really good policy. So, uh -huh. and so part of this is like knowing my customers. Do I think East is the kind of player who's going to lead from a worthless suit or is going to lead from a queen? Now, partners right. made a takeout double. That's going to make me more likely to lead away from an honor than I might otherwise be. Um, but he did lead the eight, right? A lot of people would lead high from, you know, I don't like the suit. Right. So it's tough. What do you think, Bajir? I know, Bajir, you're taking the money. You're not, you're taking, you're taking your nine tricks. Yeah. I, I, I think actually what I would do, if I was just practicing and um, there's no consequence to the hand, just, you know, like um, still match points, but it's just practice. I would do the jack. But if it's even a daily tournament online, I would get the short trick. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't what you do. You went for it, didn't you? I played the jack. I played the jack. Um, and Which, I was and because you're presenting it. Yeah. Nine, nine, well, nine, no, nine, I mean, I, it's an interesting problem. 
um, you know, the more I think about it, the more like maybe the plus score is going to be enough and other people maybe are in spades. And you know, I got too focused on, oh, one, 120 against, you know, and the people in, in two no Trump. But I didn't think about if East does have the queen of clubs, if they don't lead a club, there's going to be people going down in three mm-hmm. diamonds. And so just taking my, uh, my, my tricks there. And I will admit this was only board four, but our first three boards had been so bad. <laughs> I was like, I could use a really good score. You're getting antsy. Yeah. Yes. Which is not, not good politics, certainly not that early in this round to be like, oh, I need a board here. Um, you know, Adam, I, I remember a, 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 a really a fantastic teacher once uh, teaching us about forget the last hand as soon as you touch the cards yes. on the new hand. I, who, who was that? Who was that? Well, right with an A. Really good. Yeah. Handsome, handsome, handsome guy, too, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, anyway, Adam, I got I, it wrong. Yeah. If if you had gotten it right, do you think you would have like what would have the takeaway for you been then? Well, it, like, no, would you still have noticed this hand in the same way? Yeah, yeah, I would have because I spent I spent a little time thinking about it. Yeah, uh, and you know, I was weighing out all of these factors. And in yeah. retrospect, I didn't give enough thought to, oh, well, they led a club, and so I'm ahead of the game. Other people aren't going to get a club lead, and they might guess wrong uh, right. if the club's offside. Um, that's the big the big clue that I didn't pay enough attention to. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so this comes up a lot, right? Do I take this risky action that will be right. top or bottom kind of action. Uh, right. And it turned out that the hand people, they were all, it was all over the map. Huh. And I got like a 40% board for going down one. And I would have mm-hmm. had like a 70% board just for making my three diamonds. Uh, so I, I had it wrong. Um, you know, my analysis of the hand and what was going to happen at all the other tables was was off. Uh, but it's also, I, I, I mean, as a learner, it's reassuring seeing that you're in calls like this all the time and sometimes it breaks for you and sometimes it breaks against you. Mm-hmm. As a learner, it's like when I <laughs> make a decision like this and it breaks against me, I'm sure that I made some fundamental error that, I mean, often the case I'm sure is true, but some of the times it might just be a, well, flip a coin, see what yeah. happens. Right. And it's all about the thought process for me. If I'm going through all of these factors, okay, I have the takeout double and I have the lead of the eight and I have the fact that other people might be in two no Trump, you know, all of these things and trying to, okay, well, this tilts it this way. Oh, this tilts it back this way. And, which hmm. side of the ledger does it end up in? Um, right. You know, and I'll show you the whole hand here. Uh, okay. Right. They should have led the 10 from queen 10, nine, eight, the top. Well, of that's the why it, 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 my next question was t- analyze or what's Where up with that lead. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's part of what threw me is that like, how could they be leading the eight? From a holding with the queen, like they're just like what cards made sense. In no trumps, that lead might make more sense, but why well, you would lead the ten? Like from queen ten nine eight, the standard lead is the top of the interior sequence. Um, so that's another thing that threw me. It's just like hmm. what holding could they have where they have the queen? They could have like hmm. queen ten eight or something like that. Uh huh. So, you know, I got it wrong. I'm not. I'm not afraid to share hands that I get wrong. They happen a lot, um, but I thought well, it was. I, yeah, I, it's it's really interesting. And thank you for sharing. You know, it, one your thought process, which reminds us of all the things that we can think about when we're right. making decisions like this. To not just go blindly through the hands, even when we're playing online. It's so easy to get kind of mindless. Right. 
And then it's also so helpful. So often hands are, are perfectly crafted to prove a point. Right. But hands like this where it's less clear. Why? It's so nice hearing how you make your way through them. Yeah. It's why I almost exclusively use real life hands in my classes. Because you don't want to be just looking for whatever the, the teacher set up. You know, you want a real life experience. Um, so anyone who's really fascinated by this type of thinking, I want to recommend the book called Match Points by Kit Woolsey. Um, mm. it, it's one of those books that just like opened my eyes. Oh, there's people thinking about things like this. It's an advanced book. Uh, okay. There's a new, a new edition that came out. Gosh, it must be like five years ago. I edited the new edition. It's really, really great. You can get it. It's Bridge Winners Press. Kit Woolsey. Yeah, bridgewinners.com you can find in the bookshop. Okay. Um, it's, it's a classic. He wrote the first one in like the 70s or the 80s, and we, we updated it to modernize the bidding and everything. Um, but, yeah, it's just this whole thought process about, okay, not just should I play the jack or not, but what are the match point implications of this? Uh, Right. How many match points do I aim to win if I'm right? How many do I aim to lose if I'm wrong? And that's ultimately what we should be thinking about. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Really cool. Thank you so much, Adam. And thank you, everyone, for watching, uh, for uh, joining us for this fun hand. As always, send in your interesting hands and questions for Adam. Maybe uh, we can recruit him for another one soon. I'm always Thanks, here. Adam. Bye.